Next from Chicago, with so many individuals saying that writing a book is one of their life's goals, our contributing correspondent Jeff Berkowitz talks with an assistant professor of English from DePaul University about the publishing of her book and the process of developing her characters and unique writing style. This runs about 30 minutes. You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name, and usually politics is our game. But as I promised, no more politics. Look, it's the holiday season. It's, we're just coming off. The show will probably air a little bit after Christmas, maybe into the New Year's. And so you get that festive spirit. So we could talk about all that boring stuff about a state employee pension plan, who's running for governor on the Republican side. Even it's boring if Barack Obama would hear, okay? But instead, instead, we have Hannah Pittard. So she's written, as I said, this book called The Fates Will Find Their Way. It's kind of an interesting, catchy title. And, um, and so, I, you know, we're just going to jump right ahead. Let's, I want to give you a feel for how Hannah Pittard writes. So although we're not going to spend much time on the second book, but she's going to come back, you promised you'll come back, yeah. to talk about Reunion, and you won't be able to buy it for another nine or ten months, we're going to whet your appetite because you're going to, this is called a reading, right? Yeah. And you're just going to read for our viewers right now from Reunion, which you'll be able to get on the bookshelf in many, many stores around the entire country in uh, October of 2014. Go to it. <laughs> the thing about cheating, the thing that Elliot Nell may or may not understand, and this has nothing to do with my father, this is just a fact, but the thing about cheating is that it's easy. It's the easiest thing in the world. My sister says she has a hard time meeting men. She says San Francisco just doesn't cut it for straight women, but she's wrong. All you have to do is put yourself out there. All you have to do is take off your ring and make the decision that you want to have sex. It's a vibe, it's a <clears throat> smell, it's a goddamn animal instinct. <clears throat> I never told Peter, but a month ago he found out. Husbands are always finding out. All right, so you're seeing uh, on the picture now on the screen, the fates <clears throat> will find their way. And that's because you should be going out and you should be buying that book because we want to get that 30,000 copies up oh, in sales in the next seven, eight months before Reunion comes out to like 100,000. That'd be great. Would that be okay? Yeah, I'd take it. Okay. Good. And like, where can they find this? Like at stores all over the Chicago metro area, the fates will find their way? Oh, yeah, it's everywhere. It's unabridged. It's Amazon. women and children. Amazon, yeah, sure. And they can follow you. They right? can. They can follow me on Twitter. At Twitter? On Twitter? I don't know. I'm new to Twitter, but they can okay. follow me. Bye. At Hannah Pittard. Okay. Yes, they should do it. do it. So the thing of it is, if you get right into this book, you know, The Fates Will Find Their Way, which I read because, like Larry King said, he never reads books of the authors because he wants to identify with you folks out there. So, because you haven't read the book, he doesn't read the book. No, I read the book. See, it's even, it's all marked, you know, not marked, but it's all, you know, dog-eared bees. I am, it's, look, a good, if you want a good, fast read, you can read this in one evening, if you're a regular reader. But I was in the slow reading group, so it took me so long. I had to, like, I can't take the book back. I was going to give it back. No, I'm just saying. I could get it's the money. Gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. It was a gift. <clears throat> so the thing... You know, it starts out like a kid's book because, can I tell a little bit about it? Sure. So this girl, what's her name, Nora? Nora, Nora Lindell. Nora Lindell goes missing on Halloween. It's every parent's nightmare. Your kid's out there. Um, he, he turns out it's a she. She's trick-or-treating. How old is she at the time? 16. That's what I thought. It sounded like, I read that in, in the, in the, toward the end of the book. They talk about her missing since 16. I had the impression, I don't know if you ever said the edge, or the narrator. The narrator's a guy. They are. They're men. Multiple guys. Mm -hmm. And how do we know? Because I, <clears throat> I know I, from reading that that was the case. But how do I know there are multiple men narrating? Just because you can tell the character eventually while they're narrating, they say something that lets you know which of the guys who's involved in the story is narrating? Well, it's first person plural. So the we right away should let you know. It's a group. And okay. then very early on, they distinguish themselves. There is there are the girls and there are the boys. So, and the boys are we and the girls are they. And so it's always we, so you know it's always the boys. The girls are never narrating? Never. Okay. So the, you know, um, I mean the first question that comes to mind, how would you know like how a guy thinks and how he, because a lot of the narration is about how he thinks, right? Mm-hmm. 
I mean, how would you know? I mean, I mean, just how would you know? I can't put it any more simply than that. You know that I'm so tempted to give an answer like that. Um, there's that movie with Jack Nicholson. What is it? As good as it gets? Is that what it's called? Uh, how do you write women so well? A woman asks him, and he says, "I picture a man, and then I take away reason and logic, or something <laughs> like that." It's very funny, right? right. Um, I don't know. I, I picture a woman, and then I take away <laughs> take away what <laughs> in, intelligence and, mm -hmm. and reason. And, no, and seriously, um, give me a serious answer. Come the on. serious answer is I I grew up with a brother, and I grew up with a father, and I've I pay attention. I'm a writer. I, I'm a human being, and I think. Um, all you have to do is keep your ears and eyes open. And I think as a child, I was definitely more interested in watching what was happening with men and with women, with boys and with girls. And once you start paying attention, it's, it, it's not about um, what sex you are or aren't. It's just what you see happening. I, I, I watched men and this is what I saw. Well, you know, that's fine. I mean, look, guys are always thinking about sex, right? I mean, isn't that, the, that's, that, that is how guys are portrayed, that one, they have sex on their mind much more than women, mm -hmm. and two, they're very visual when it comes to sex. So are those things true as you see it? Because you're a novelist, do you portray the men in your novels, the boys in your novels, as always think, especially the teenage boys, because this starts out with teenage boys. Mm -hmm. And so, especially teenage boys, but you know, as they grow older, do they continue to focus on sex guys, men, more than women? I think, well, first of all, I think everyone thinks about sex. Uh, and, and I think it's one of those, it's, it's a myth that's been um, just sort of prolonged and, and people, people believe it or they don't believe it, I don't know. I think it makes men comfortable to think that they think about sex more often than women. Women think about sex, everybody knows that. Um, or all they, women, I think. Do you think most women think about sex as much as men? So it's, it's just They probably a, think about it more often. They're thinking, how can I avoid having sex tonight with my husband? While the man is just, I'm kidding. Um, but no, I think everyone thinks about sex, whether it's trying to avoid it or, or some aspect of it or have it. Um, and these boys obviously start off thinking about sex a lot. And I think honestly, Because they're 15 or 16. they're 15 or 16. In the same way that girls are thinking about sex when they're 15 or 16. Maybe, maybe a much different way, right? Girls are probably scared and excited. Boys are maybe just excited when they're thinking about Not it. Not scared. But you don't think they're scared? I think they're scared. Yeah. S-less. I didn't say Scared it. Scared what? Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I think everyone, I, 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 yeah, you no, told okay. me, you told me. No, no, I'm um, saying, if people were wondering why she was whispering, she was thinking if she whispered, the profanity would be okay. You see, <laughs> you a lack said, of reason. Okay. She's a woman. She I can't thought you reason. said it was okay. She can write okay. great books. She can write they approved it beforehand, and now they're taking it away no, from No, it me. is okay, but you sort of whispered it, and I was wondering, like, why well, would you whisper Well, because you, I don't think you like it. I'm trying to be respectful. So I'm You, like, know me for about seven minutes or something. How do you know what I I've met you before so these so these men do think about sex but but more as they get older they're not thinking about sex so much as they're thinking about this specific girl okay. and and they've Nora Nora and that runs throughout the entire novel yes. and it closes with that yes it's it's what? Why is their perception of Nora run through the entire novel, or does no, it? Do Nora, right? you know, on a, it, it does. Um, but Nora is, it, it, she's, you know, she's a diving board. She's, she's the platform to get to talk about the thing that I really want to talk about, which is just the way that I'm, I'm, I use men in the book, but it's everybody. It's, it's human beings have so many regrets, and they're so addicted to the past and they rather than looking forward rather than thinking I love my life right now it's so easy and so tempting to say but god it was so good 5 minutes ago or or what if I'd met and married that woman who I passed on the elevator um what what if my life would have been so different and i think and I hear all of my friends saying things like this. I've heard my parents say things like this I, all my life. I've so heard, it runs across both genders. It's I, not uh, absolutely. Female. It runs I across just ages. This. It's just yeah. women's. But men, men, are, men are interesting to me in a different way. Women, women scare me. Um, and, and I've only recently started writing about them. The passage that I read is, is a female narrator. Um, and I've avoided writing women up until this, this is newest she right? book. Is it just generally so easy to cheat? All you have to do is take off your ring and you'll emit a smell or something? I don't you know. You said it. I did say you it. You wrote it. I, I, I don't know. I'm a well, fiction writer. Well, we would writer. write something unless you thought it was credible, would you? 
I think that probably cheating is a lot easier than than most people think it is. You know, I as a I grew up. Have you ever cheated? On never. You? never. I've never cheated on a single person. You're married. No. I am. Never cheated. No. Oh gosh, no. And he's never cheated on it. me. Yeah. You, you know that for sure. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. How would you know it for sure? He's an open book. He's great. He's the best. He's he's the most loyal yeah. person in the That's world. That's what they say about all guys, even the guys who cheat. Don't you think? Um, like Bill Clinton, you don't think Hillary ever said that about Bill? Oh no, no, I don't never think cheated. she ever did. She knew he'd cheat from the moment probably. she met him, probably. Yes. All right, so like, but even like when you were a teenager, when you were like in college, okay, you didn't know your husband then, right? No. We ever go out with a guy and it was a serious relationship, and then some other guy asked you out for like a casual thing. Did you run to the guy you were going out with seriously and say, "Oh, I'm going out to casual"? I thing? love this past that you've given me, where I have boyfriends. It's the happiest thing in the boyfriends? world. Not in high school, and like so maybe one in college. Really? And there certainly See, were lots of people asking me You're out. You just like all of a oh, sudden became pretty last year. Or that's something. really funny. I have been. I've always been really you know, the reason. You, one question that you've asked me before the show started was why why I started writing or why I right. write, and I was an awkward little thing, very very introverted, very self conscious, always thinking that everyone was looking at me, judging me, thinking what are you doing wrong? Why are you doing it wrong? Um, and so even even when people wanted to be friends with me, you know, I think a lot of people say nobody wanted to be my friend. I think a lot of people wanted to be my friend, and I was really scared to have friends. Uh, because I was sort of tall and gangly, um, and it was just. You are tall. I am tall me. still. Well, like oh, five ten? You. What'd you say? I'd say five. I'd say five eleven. Five eleven. I might even say five eleven and a half. Might even. Oh, you like you like being tall. I do like being tall. Yes. So How all of these husband? things. He's six one. Oh, six so it's like perfect. Yeah, it's, it's well, nice. it might be better if you're six four, but if you wear heels, you're like six four. Right? And it's great, and I like wearing heels. But and all what does of he feel if you wore five inch heels? <clears throat> is he okay with it? He he doesn't mind it. It makes it gives me a little he bit of advantage. He says that, but do you now you're the novelist and you know guys, so he says I don't mind. Do you trust him? I think he likes it when we're looked at. I think he likes that we get stared at sometimes because we're both tall. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. He likes it. Yeah, sure. But you get stared at. Yeah. You sure? I like that he gets stared at. He's a good looking guy. Oh no, but so so if you're a little taller wearing heels, do you think he likes that? Yeah, for sure. Okay. No, it's good. Well, anyway, okay. Yeah. So I digress. Okay. Yeah. But it is. It, well, it's a big deal. It's a big deal when kids are growing up. You would know this, right? Their height thing. Yes, okay. it is a big deal to be yeah. tall and and often uncomfortable. Um, and you wrote about guys who were kind of guys who were gangly at that age. Who's that guy, Dan? Or Danny. Danny, Danny Hatchet. He sort of is he tall, and gangling, pimples, and like that Danny. when he's young. Danny, I love Danny. Um, Danny's probably the the boy in the book who is who is most like me. Uh, and yeah, he's because he's a gangly. He's tall and gangly. And he's he gangly have a lot and of tall, friends. and you know he's awkward and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's how, that is how you think of yourself. As like tall and gangly no, no, and awkward. No, no, when you were young, when you were. When young. I was, I know it for a fact. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. So you can identify with that. Yes. Look, I've got these really long arms, and I still, to this day, think that they're much shorter. I'm always knocking into things. Yeah. So getting back to the book, the yes. novel. Okay, so, so Nora goes missing. Yes. And all these guys, well, everybody, initially, she's just missing for a day, and they do the usual thing, looking for her. Sure. But then time sets in, and then she's gone. And then, and then your book picks up later on, we'll go back and forth, with... Nobody knows. Is she dead? Was she killed? You, you go through various scenarios. Mm -hmm. I think that's the one people would probably think is most likely. That she was killed? Yeah, yes. because that's, you know, and then, of course, when you think about it, what's the rest of the book going to be about? <laughs> so it makes sense that, so we don't find out what happened to her, but it does pick up with somebody who appears to be her living with somebody. She's delivered two kids. Mm -hmm. He's Mexican. She's, of course, white. And that's all we sort of know. Mm -hmm. There's there there are a couple fantasies that that run through the book and and again like I said I don't think it matters that we don't find out what happens to Nora because ultimately the book is less about her than it is about the boys and not letting go and it's it's about the boys who become men and the way that they have appropriated this girl and the memory of this girl even from the people who the memory really belongs to which is her family the memory of Nora and she's she's ageless <clears throat> she'll always be 16 do you think in their mind well that's what's that's what's sort of sick about it right she she's 16 know. and they they do age her but they they age her in uh, they 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 give her a husband but he's other than they are you know they make him an old Mexican man instead of similar to what they are they they even send her wait how do you know <clears throat> they make him an old Mexican man because those are their fantasies 
Oh, I thought that was reality. No, those are their fantasies. So we don't really They're know. They're all what ifs. They're all, so, so that you're saying that, I missed that. So that should have been clear to me. This was their fantasy. I thought you were portraying that, that she really was married to They're all to possibilities. Him. Okay, and another possibility was she dead. Well, I thought you went through these. You actually outline options, yeah. but then you spend a lot of time with the Mexican guy that she's married to. That Now, she's had these two kids, and it appears on that little fantasy mm -hmm. or that option, it appears that she had the two kids with somebody else. Maybe it was the guy who raped her when she right. was first kidnapped. But maybe he married it was her boyfriend. Maybe but, it was but it appears it's clear that <laughs> was the case, that he just finds her with the kids, She's working in a restaurant, or he's going to the restaurant. Somehow, he marries her. Mm -hmm. He takes care of this. Right. And then she has a third kid, and that is through him right. in this little fantasy. Yeah, right? in the fantasy. In the fantasy. Yeah. And so then she's got these three kids, and then, then what happens? Well, then, another f then they let go of that fantasy. They decide she's almost too happy, and they don't right. like that she's too happy. She's found someone that she loves. She's got these kids that she loves, but they can't let her... And there. So, so she they, leaves the, he leaves the man, she leaves the kids, yeah. right? And she goes where? But she's not doing anything. It's the boys controlling her, right? Because it's just the idea of her. So the boys send her to India. They send her to India. And again... Where was that terrorist incident? Where was it? Yeah. In Mumbai? Yeah, and that's what happens in the book. That's right. She's seen there by these guys because it just so happens she happens to be where this terrorist incident is. Right. And they're watching TV and they think they see her. Which is ludicrous, right? And absurd. It's not ludicrous. I believed it. Oh. I believed it all. <laughs> well, this is great. I'm so gullible. That's great. You're one of the guys. Women? Uh, yeah, just don't. I'm so gullible. Would you stop lying to me? <laughs> I've just been lying to women all my life. And you just continue this tr tradition. I'm not here. lying. This well, is you, this fiction. This book, I was supposed I was taking you it's at your word. I, maybe you need to go back to politicians. You think so? Okay, no, but seriously, Speaking so of that's not great. Liars. No, I, it's not, I'm just kidding, but it's really good. See, because I kind of felt Okay, I thought that was the case, and I even thought that like well, it's then then she of course before that terrorist incident mm. she finds herself with another woman. Yes. It turns out she's a lesbian. Well, or is it, she bisexual? But, I don't know. But look again, who's who's every guy's made, fantasy? Every guy's fantasy. every man's fantasy is that is is every guy's fantasy is this right? Because you know guys so well, is for this guy to be with two women who are lesbians? Oh, is that is that the I don't is that think is so. that a common fantasy of men? Is it? You're, te you're telling no, me? No, I'm asking you. You know guys. I, I know the guys in this book. And, and I'll tell you something. Okay, and I those do. guys in the book, would that be a fantasy of theirs? No, that's not their fantasy. Their fantasy is to, is to focus on a missing 16-year-old girl and what might have happened to her. But that was one of their options that you clearly outlined. Don't move that chair. That's I'm not. No, I was gonna, okay. no, I wasn't going to move the chair. Don't hit me with the chair. I was gonna, I was, you know, I'm getting like, physical here. So. Uh, Andrew, no, come, but, where's Andrew when I leave? <laughs> But look, look at all of the things that you thought were real, and, and I actually take that okay. as a compliment. Yeah. But they're all fantasies, but they're the fantasies that, that these boys, men, these boys slash okay. men have come so up with. So the lesbian fantasy of right. this woman. And, and then, then she gets cancer, and, and that's a fantasy. Cancer. But look, so, so all of them, and they... they Wait, is this bad? And I've never done this with, a, I've done it with political folks, but not real authors, mm -hmm. novels. Am I supposed to be telling with you the story? Or are we like not going to have any sales of the book or something? I, you know, who, you started off by saying it's a children's book, so that right there, which, and it's <laughs> I not. I didn't. <laughs> no, but did. is it okay for us to tell without telling everything? Is Listen, it? this book's been out since 2011. It's okay. It's the next book. We're All not right. going to give uh, that okay. away. All right. It, it, the next book begins with a death. Uh, I could do a show without you sometime, and I'll just give the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're nice to me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. All right, so, okay, so we're telling that story, and so they, yeah, so she gets cancer. Yes. And that's where it gets murky because then I don't know so much what happens to her. Then it shifts back to these guys. Oh, and that is interesting because then there's a lot of these guys, you're sort of taking them through. They're now middle aged, they're now 30 and 40. Mm -hmm. They've got their own kids. Their mothers are still around. There's a big mother thing. We'll have, not have time to get into that. Yeah. But like, so they're there with the, each of these guys, most of these guys have families. And then, of course, things happen. But this is all told like, uh, can you identify with this? Like, where'd you grow up? In Atlanta. Atlanta. I grew up in Atlanta, but I, I and then moved um, around 13 or 14 to the mid-Atlantic, to the okay. eastern shore of Maryland. Oh, and, yeah. and I definitely intend this to be the sort of Delmarva. Eastern shore of Maryland. Yeah. So like a nice suburban area. Yeah. You People know, knows everybody and safe. And they stay there. That's the thing. Yes. That's not true anymore. No, it's not. But for your book, these guys stay there. They stay in the same neighborhood. They kind of have the same group of friends. A few go bad. They do some really nasty things. They think, could they have predicted that? Right. 
but basically they stay there. And then they think, and it kind of ends that way. I don't care what you go with the ending, because I think it's kind of really relates to every guy's problem, not every guy, every person's problem. They're married, it's kind of okay. You know, they're going up to bed, they say, you do this, like you open up the windows, uh, your wife's coming up, you know, she's turning off everything, dealing with the last kid, making the last call from college and so forth. And like what, they're gonna go make love then? Maybe they'll hold each other. Well, you don't know, but you've only been married a year, right? Now, how could you possibly <laughs> know this stuff? So you can't, are you writing in the reunion about people who've been married a length of time? Because without experience, how could you possibly know? You're kidding, right? You can only write about what you know? That's, well, sort of. I mean, the, the great writers went off like Norman Mailer, Ernest Hemingway, would you say he's a great writer? Yeah, I'd say he's a great writer. Okay, so he went off and did things. You know, he got involved in wars, he, ambulances, whatever. Right. He could never, like if he just like grew up in Winneka and stayed here and worked at Homer's and then went to University of Illinois and then got a job in the bank and got married and had a nice family, you think at 35 he could write a great book? Of course not. Well, I, you know, there's a difference between being a professional shut-in and not, and not reading and not being out and not talking to, to people and getting to know people and not, not seeing how the world is being lived around you. There's a difference between being the kind of person okay. who shuts himself away and thinks that he or she can no, no, write a I, great book. No, but you know book. what I mean. You have to do something. But is your book at all autobiographical? This book? Yeah. These are, the the every single boy in this book is me. I mean, all of every the little, boys they're, they're all, all of these characters are me. I the just, men are you? I gave them I mean, penises they... and people, and, and I can't tell you how often men read this book. All the men who I know who have read this book say, I can't believe you wrote about me. I told you those stories in secret. So this is not like a chick flick. This, this is like for guys too. The, the men more than women that I, that I encounter. They, they, you know them. So, like, who's the guy who interviewed you for NPR? Who's that guy? Bob Scott Simon. Scott Simon. Scott Simon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like a fair to middling. No, he's good. Seriously. He's good. I, I should be so good. Okay. So, but he's, that really scared him that you knew so much about guys, right? It did, it, yeah, and it was, it was a great compliment. He said the reason, he, he, called, um, he called my agent and said I, I wanted to come on the show because he had read the book just after spending a weekend with a friend, one of his old friends, and they get right. together once a year. And then he'd read the book shortly after that, and he thought, how, how does she know what, what I just did last how week? How do you know like guys jerk off as much as you say they do? I don't even know if they do, but you seem to suggest they do, right? I mean, they've got this thing. What are they going to do with it? It's just hanging out there. Of course they're going to do something with it. I don't know. I just I used, I just used my imagination. I mean, that's the other thing. You say Hemingway went off and did stuff, and, and you're right. I mean, Other than jerking off. That's yeah. right, yeah. yes. And, and so he could write a great book. Right. I do go outside, and I, and I talk to stuff. people, and I do things. Um, but there's, there's an author, Stephen Dixon, who taught at Johns Hopkins for a long time. And, and I, I remember reading an interview that he gave once, and he has a novel that begins, it's called I, the letter I, the, as the first person. And it begins with this young man who is living in Paris above a Chinese restaurant. And in an interview, they said, you captured Paris so well. How did you do that? Um, how many times did you go over there to research? And he said, well, I've never been to Paris. And the you interviewer, about it the interviewer like... said, but how did you write it so well? And he said, I'm a fiction writer. I used my imagination. Uh -huh. He didn't research it. He just thought, this is what this I one. think Paris is. Right. And he wrote it down. And but you're, it. but no, but, but you didn't just make fiction about these guys. You, he said it was scary, but you, you okay, but seriously, mm -hmm. you've observed a lot of guys yeah. over time. You have sure. gone out with guys. I have. Okay. Not many. <laughs> Some. <laughs> what do you mean, not many? You know what it How is? How many guys would you say you've gone out with before you got married? <laughs> <laughs> Such a strange question. I don't know, 10? Maybe 10? Really? Yeah. So that's like a limited sample. I know. No, okay. But listen, the, listen, for real okay. though, you know, they, there are those people, there's that television show, there are all of them now, Criminal Minds, things like right, that, where right. they solve crimes because they read people, and it turns out that's really what psychics do. Psychics aren't psychics, they just pay attention. I think that there are some fiction writers that have to, you know, they go out and they fight with the bulls and then they come home and they happen to just, they've got the story like in right, their okay. bellies and, they, and they're Hemingway and they just write it out there and it's the most beautiful thing you've ever read. Um, but then 
there's maybe a fiction writer like me. And I think I'm one of those, I'm not a psychic, but I pay attention. I'm reading people constantly because I love it. And I love to see you what do. people... So like when you go to a restaurant, you like to people watch all I'm the time. so annoying to go to restaurants yeah. with. And half the time... So you're always watching, observing. I'm watching, I'm observing. Listening, listening. I'm always listening. So for to write good dialogue, and there is good dialogue yeah. in this book, you really have to have an ear for it. And part of it is just listening to how people talk. I think so. Yeah. People very rarely speak to one another, you do know, you, actually respond. Your characters actually, like you that. create them, do, do they, well, do they, like, tell you, do you sort of listen to them? Do they become so real? It's not like you're sitting down and just writing. And by the way, when you sit down, you do write, like, with the TV on? You said that. Somewhere. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes. Sometimes I like Seems to have... Seems like it be terribly distracting. It's not, though. Like, this, this book was written with uh, the NBA Finals happening in the background, and I don't care about the, the NBA, NBA Finals. Oh, you just like that. He's taught me. He's okay. I care about well, the, the individual players. he's the only guy players. you can be in the room with uh, alone, right? Is this true? No, that I didn't say alone. Well, what I did said you say? the only person I can sit... And I said person. I didn't say guy. I didn't say man. The I didn't say person. woman. Oh, I just I said the yeah. only person I consistently want to be in a room with. Consistently. Yeah. Okay. Because maybe if I, maybe I would. What be happens with other people? You just took, you don't like to want to be in the room itching. that much. Yeah. 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 They I get on it. your nerves, so, so to speak. I think it's me. I get on my nerves. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> no, but so okay, but you. I asked you how you write, and you sort of made a joke. You said you write with guts and heart, right? Yeah. Was that is that a joke? No, but you gave me other things. Oh, like I did. With a with little light on, with right, your computer. Right, right. Cutesy, very cutesy. I didn't mean it to be well, cute. I didn't just, know what I you... can understand. You wouldn't take me seriously because I do political The question, like, can we... Well, you probably even think, like, why am I even having you on? Hold on. The, que the question was, I write with blank, blank, and blank. I didn't know Precision, if we were going... Precision, economy, and skill. Because I heard somebody say that once in a Winneka Middle School. Isn't that right? He was trying to teach maybe, like, to write narrative. Precision, economy, and skill. Well, I really like that. That's great. <laughs> no, you don't. No, I do. You do? Oh, I really do. I think that's fantastic. Okay. I love economy. Well, that's why I gave you some blanks, and you filled in blanks with But you didn't heart. say, I mean, I, it All should right. have said, like a Mad Libs underneath, it should have said abstraction, or, you know, give me a very concrete, okay. n a noun, perhaps, or an adjective. I wasn't quite sure, so that's why I was giving you options. No, it was excellent. It's an excellent book, and, you, and, you know, have I missed something? What would you have wanted to talk about? We only have a minute or two left. Thanks so much for coming. Our guest has been Hannah Petard. She's a teacher at the Paul University. She is a visiting assistant professor. They use that phrase oddly because you've been there now three years. I've been there. I'm on my fourth year. Yeah. And you got your degree from the University of Chicago, right? You're my undergraduate alum. degree. A my proud graduate alum. degree from Virginia, but yes. University of Virginia. Yes, I'm also a proud alum there. You've done like actually, you're only. Can I say your age? Sure. Yeah. You're only 35, which is really incredibly young, but you've really done you told a me I was old. Around. You told me I was old before the interview. You, you did. That. You said that's very old. You're much older, is what you said. <laughs> <laughs> joke. I don't even know what that was in reference to. I don't know. I don't think we're going to, you know, I don't think we're going to connect. We, if we met each other on Match Thought, it would just like be so disastrous. You know? Would it be? Don't you think? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Well, maybe we should try it. Well, you got I have this a husband. husband. Yes. I don't cheat. I write about cheating, so I All don't right. have so to. So anyway, she'll be back. She'll be talking about reunion. You should run to the store to buy. The fates will find their way. You can find it all over. All kidding aside, this is a fact. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation form to provide gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.